afternoon. Hi <laughs> Welcome to a winter wonderland. Yeah. Uh, we're celebrating New Year in a, a quite local to where we stay. As you can see, absolutely beautiful. We've got our we've got our van, we've got a park set up. So hopefully we don't get snowed in. But we're here, this is Saturday, and we're here till Monday. So we're here two nights. It might be Monday before we <laughs> see if it doesn't stop snowing. We arrived this been, morning. We've got enough food, so I'm yeah. okay. We arrived about half eight this morning, and there was no snow whatsoever, but we knew it was due in. So we came up very early, so we from an early bug to the day. And our friends are meant to be here, but I think they've been caught in the snow. So hopefully they'll still make it. <laughs> With Kirsty back at the campsite setting up the van and the recent snowfall, I take this opportunity to hit the trails and explore the woodland surrounding Aberfoyle. This is a wee shelter for the weekend. We've got the tarp set up. And there's a wee fire ready for this evening. And inside, you can see Kirsty with the diesel heater on and the kettle on because somebody kicked over his coffee straight away. <laughs> I'm not doing too well. And there's young Barra in there too. So hopefully the snow doesn't get too bad, but just enough so it's nice and beautiful and we can still get out for a walk later as well. Everybody keeps asking me to do a van tour. So we did this van ourselves. So it's taken me to this point to get everything exactly the way it suits me and Cole and the way that we travel. A lot of people like bigger vans and that's fine. We could have got a bigger van, but this suits us better. Um, simple things like windows. I've never wanted a window in the van. I think that's enough. We're in the van to sleep and eat. Most of the time we're out and about. So um, we've just made it perfectly to suit us. Uh, and the fact that we've travelled so much for so many years together, we came up with this design. So I put pen to paper, back to my art, art days and technical drawing days and drew it all out and called need all the sort of beds and the units and whatnot but this van came it was just ply lines so what we did was we soundproofed it and we insulated it and we plied it and we did a vapor barrier as well and then we carpeted it and then we did the flooring so we insulated the floor and everything put the cushion floor down as you can see we've always got big boots on so it's kind of bomb-proof this van as far as dirt goes. So this is where I keep my wee gas stove, a wee cheap gas stove that we got and all my gases at the back and my pots and pans. This is a, our fridge, which we, we got it and we thought, oh, that's quite a big fridge. And now we, we're kind of thinking, oh, I wish we'd get a bigger fridge. But do you know what? It's better than we had. We used to just have a wee cool bag uh, that you plugged into your cigarette lighter so it's so much better this is a toilet which we pull out at night so our bed finishes here and we pull it out at night and, um, and put it back in, in the morning so it's dead easy uh, and we just empty it when we go home most of the time unless we're on a big trip this here is where we keep our water and it's our drinks cabinet as well uh, so we keep some bottles of rum and Jack Daniels in there 
Okay, so this is our television that we've got. I keep it covered and insulated just in the winter if it's cold and it's sitting out in the road or whatever. Um, it just keeps it warm. It's such a good uh, system that we've got. And you just pull a wee tag and it moves around and we can have, watch it from outside or uh, and it clips back into the place. And we've got a wee sound bar as well, which makes all the difference. It's almost like a home cinema in here at night, especially because the walls are black. It's just so good and warm. In fact, this fan can be too warm. I mean, it's snowing today, and we've had the diesel heater on for about five minutes, and it's now probably too hot, I would say, in here. The top here is was a piece of wood. I work at Mugged at Country Park, and that's a piece of salted elm that Cole processed. So basically it was a bit of a tree and he processed it and it's the same piece of wood we have here for our um, table which is where my gas stove goes when I cook. We also had in our last van we had the, the opened at the top we decided that that could be a faff as well but instead of just uh, changing it what we decided to do was we would have top and side so we've got access so when the bed's made up we can we can access the sides but we can also get into them from the, the top we also have there's just loads of space in here um, we've got a cutlery drawer Paul's got his side his cupboard and I've got my cupboard and that's purely for clothes waterproofs and whatnot uh, and then we have our food cupboards which are under here when we make the bed up at night, it takes two minutes in comparison. It's just a bit of wood that slides over. All the, the, the tops of the beds are ventilated with holes. We found before um, it, it could get damp or wet with condensation. So we've done that this time and that seems to have really combated it really well. What I'll do is I'll come back and show you the bed once it's made up. Or we can even show you um, me making up the bed to let you see how easy it is. Maybe not tonight, because we're having a wee drink tonight, so that might be carnage, or we might think it's quite funny to do that tonight. <laughs> but either way, we will show you at some point what it's like when it's uh, full size. And, and this cushion here, sorry, I should have said, this cushion here comes down, fits perfectly in the middle. So it was all designed 10 inch its life, so they're all fitted perfectly. So the battery, before I got the van, I decided that I was definitely getting a leisure battery in this van because it was basically just like camping before the mould van. So I got a 110 watt lead acid battery. Call is here amp. because <laughs> <laughs> technical <laughs> stuff I'm not good at. So it was a 110 amp leisure battery that I got for call to fit. <laughs> and it really wasn't enough for us. Uh, once we started using it, we soon realised we'd never go to campsite. We we really need something that lasts us a while and we don't have solar panels. So in Cole's wisdom, he did a wee bit of research and we got a, now, a, a, no, no, a 230 amp, Lithium, I am um, iron, iron. <laughs> phosphate, <laughs> phosphate battery, <laughs> uh, and it runs off the alternator, and that seems to do is because when we're travelling about, it charges really easy, and we've got the fridge on the full time we're away, yeah. and we as, put we're in our bed at nine o'clock at night, regardless long, if it's winter or summer. As long as you're not sat stationary for about six seven days you know it's it's and you're actually traveling around so we tend to go on big trips and we'll go and visit an area then we'll drive somewhere else for an hour and then we'll stop off and then we'll go visit somewhere else and sometimes we'll be driving for another three hours and it tends to just keep it topped up enough and we've been away for 10 days and we've yet to run out of that because it's really clever with the lithium ion phosphate leisure batteries they're obviously smart and uh, they're good in the cold because they've got heaters compared to the lead acid and you run them off an app so you can see exactly what you've got and you can switch it on and off and have a fantastic battery. Expensive at the time but 
they, they actually work and you get to use them and you can run your TV, your diesel heater, your fridge without having like, anxiety about your battery conking out in the middle of the night when it's too cold. So definitely very expensive at the time, but it's one of those things, once you spend the money a year in, you think that was a really good investment because our last van, we didn't have anything at all. We were in the dark ages, weren't we? Yeah. But it, this, do you know what? It was fine. It, it suited it was, it its was. purpose at the time. We are just all, also I mean, getting Kirsty, older. Kirsty's getting older, I'm getting younger, <laughs> so she needs the, the extra heat. But as she says, she did a fantastic job insulating. It was Kirsty who did this. There must be about three metric tons of insulation in this van because we hear our friends sometimes talking about running their diesel heater all night. Oh, we could. And we find we, we put it on couldn't. for five minutes 10 minutes at the lowest setting and then we have to switch it off well really that's the the van tool maybe give you a glimpse of the way we set up the diesel heater and things tomorrow but just now that will do is i'm going to go out and check to see how bad the snow is and our friends are due up so hopefully they'll make it through the blizzard and otherwise we're here ourselves <laughs> for the next two weeks i think so we'll speak soon Well, we're going for breakfast to Aberfoyle, the Liz and McGregor's, to get a full Scottish. Well, I had a good night last night. Some of our friends are a bit fragile, but we're, we're hiking in over the hills, kind of mile and a half and all that. So, looking forward to a good feed. To the coffee we go. After an enjoyable breakfast in Aberfoyle, we hiked back the two miles to the campsite and then decided to explore the hillsides surrounding the Aberfoyle forests. Nearly there. We've literally got one more wall to go, a couple more bogs, and the wall might be the final obstacle. It's an old stone dike wall. We've got to cross, and I think the cairns and the standing stones are on the other side, if we can find them. But this feature here is what we have crossed about five streams, two stone walls, six fences, about a dozen bogs <laughs> to get up to. That's part of our adventure. We just get up and we have a look and see if we can see it. And sometimes it's kind of very recognisable that it's a cairn and sometimes it's not. Well, we've reached cairn number two. This one's a bit more obvious. Great views over the Lake of Menchie. You can actually see some stonework, which I'll, I shall show you. You can see here, it's actually built up and Kirsty's climbing up on top of it just now. With darkness quickly approaching, and daylight fading fast, the decision was made to leave the cairns and quickly head down the hillside and find the safety of the forestry tracks and head our way back quickly to the campsite to bring in New Year's Eve with our friends. Should all acquaintance be forgot Craig and Jen, a friends over from Edinburgh way. Very quiet people, as you can see, not happy to be filmed first thing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll catch you next time, okay, guys? Thanks for coming. Well, yeah. right, bye. <laughs> well, after a, quite an early night for New Year, um, we got to our beds about quarter to one last night and we were in the forest. We had a fire, we had a few drinks with friends. It was a brilliant night. 
Um, it was so, a quiet night because we burnt ourselves out the, the night, night before, before was the reality. Uh, with Mo and Clinton and Bodget and Jen. Um, we're all packed up now and we're just ready to head off and get things cleaned before back to work. Uh, so thanks for joining us um, on our new year trip to Aberfoyle. And if you liked the video, just like and subscribe. We would really appreciate it. Uh, just a new channel we're starting out. So thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. All the best.